What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Jones. What a mind loving blind, what a wife to do. He is gay, only she keeps my heart laughing. Never know where her brain is Joan Davis Show, I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. Die, Brad. <laughs> Joni, it's just a simple head cold. Will you stop making such a fuss over it? Fuss? I'm practically at death's door. <laughs> you have no sympathy for me. Joni, I took your temperature. It's normal. Stop being such a hypochondriac and making it ten times as bad as it is. I have demodia, that's what. Look, Joni, it's Saturday, my day off. Will you let me relax? I'd leave a double the bodge. You have nothing. Let's confine this discussion to my cold. I have probably even more than double the bodge. I have the large economy size the bodge. And you don't care if I live or die. Live or die? Joni, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous? Yeah, well, I heard of a woman who had a cold just like mine, ignored it, was driving to the market one day to do her shopping. Suddenly, she was gone, just like that. Really? Yeah, she sneezed, turning a corner and ran into a truck. <laughs> Johnny, will you stop acting like a baby over a minor ailment? You have a little head cold, no temperature, and you act like you're dying. Well, I am dying. And if I do, remember, I'm mad at you. I don't even want you at my funeral. <laughs> Stay away. You're not welcome. Don't come to it. Please, Johnny. I'm sorry, dear. I love you and you're my baby, and I'm sorry if I sounded unsympathetic. All right. You can come to my funeral. I think I'm going to die. <laughs> if that's for me, honey, I, I don't even want to talk. I haven't got the strength. Hello? What? Oh, Mabel? Well, you and the girls are expecting Joan over to play bridge. Oh, no, she couldn't possibly play bridge. No, she's sick. She's practically dying. Oh, no. Uh, so wait, 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 Brad. I, I, I think I just passed the crisis. Oh, let me talk. Hello, Mabel. Gee, I forgot all about our bridge game this afternoon. Oh, well, it'll take more than a little head cold to keep me away from a bridge game. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll get dressed and come right over. See you later. Money, you certainly made an astonishing recovery for someone who was at death's door a few minutes ago. Yeah, well, it, it was courage, honey. Uh, the will to live. The will to carry on. The will to... Uh... Play bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad, you make me so mad. You just wait till you get sick sometime, and you want a little sympathy from me. <laughs> well, you're not going to get it. <laughs> Furthermore, I've changed my mind. About what? You can't come to my funeral. <laughs> Brad! Where are you, honey? I won the bridge prize. Six crocheted pot holders. Went for a walk in park. We'll be home for dinner. Love. <laughs> I'll bet he went to the zoo, the little dickens. Oh, he's just a boy at heart, that one. Who can that be? Oh, 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 oh,
That's how he is. He's always making something seem ten times worse than it is. Yes, I know the type. There's one like him in the army in every outfit. Yeah, come on, Goodbye. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, my foot, my foot. It, 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 it's throbbing. Call Dr. Griswold, the bone man. Oh, it's throbbing, so maybe blood poisoning is, is setting in. Brad, you've got a simple little sprain. Now, will you stop making such a big fuss about it? Fuss about it? Here I am half dying. Have you no sympathy for me? Oh. Now, where did I hear that before? There's something very familiar about this situation. Did Jody call Dr. Griswold? Oh, yes. I, I was sick. And you accused me of being a baby, remember? Oh, it's, it's probably broken. That's, that's it. It's broken. Bradley, <laughs> it's Saturday. My day off. All right, all right. I'll, I'll call him myself. You just don't know if I'm hurt that I'm in pain, that's all. I just think you're being a big baby like you accused me of being. No, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Hello? Uh, Dr. Griswold, please. Uh, yes. Hello, doctor. This is uh, Brad Stevens. Oh, uh, oh, fine, thanks. What am I saying? If I, if I were fine, I wouldn't be calling you. Uh, look, doctor, I think I, I broke my foot. What? Oh, yeah, yes, I, I, I can hobble to the car. All right, uh, fine, fine. Uh, goodbye. Joan, Joan, he said for you to drive me to Lursa, a certain hospital, have the x-rays taken, and he'll meet us there. That's... Uh... Well, aren't you going to help me up? <laughs> oh, all right, Brad. <clears throat> are you going to look like a fool when those x-rays are developed? You hypochondriac, you. Oh, Joan. <laughs> oh, honey, it hurts the worst. Come now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Joan. <laughs> that sedative I gave him certainly put him out, didn't it? Well, I should say it did. He's only got a simple little sprain. I don't know why he had a knock But, Joan, your husband is a very brave man. The little complaining he did and the calm he showed under the circumstances are quite commendable. He must have been in considerable pain. What do you mean? Well, according to these x-rays, your husband has three broken toes in his right foot, one transverse fracture and two spiral fractures. <laughs> You mean he's really hurt? Well, it's as bad a foot as I've seen in a long time. Oh, and I didn't believe him. I, I made fun of him and called him a baby. Oh, that's too bad. He must have been in terrible pain. I didn't believe him. I, I made fun of him. Why don't you just let him rest a while? We'll be setting the bone soon, and you can come back tomorrow and... Oh, but I, I couldn't possibly leave like this. Not after the way I acted and the things that I said. I'll, I'll have to apologize. Joan, he's under a sedative. You couldn't possibly do anything for him. No, I must apologize, Doctor. Brad. Brad, Brad dear. Brad, honey. I'm sorry. Brad! Brad! Please. Brad, honey, you, you just... Brad, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry.
Mabel for coming over and keeping me company. You know, this is the first night that Brad and I have ever been separated since we've been married. And, and I'll just never be able to forgive myself for the way I acted today. Oh, poor Brad lying there in the hospital suffering since early this afternoon. And, well, I told him he was making a big fuss about nothing. And now he's lying there, critically ill. With three broken toes. <laughs> Tell me, broken toes aren't so terrible. You're getting yourself all worked up about nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Brad's really hurt, and I didn't believe him. I poo pooed him. <laughs> so I'll never poo poo him again. If I learned my lesson, I pooed my last poo. <laughs> I'll never poo again. Poo. Oh, Joni, you can see him tomorrow morning and explain. But tomorrow morning will be too late. Uh, they don't know how to take care of him. Supposing he gets sick or something. But Johnny's in the hospital. So what? Do they know that he's allergic to aspirin like I do? Do they know that he's taking a spring tonic now every morning? Do they know that he likes to sleep in only silk pajamas? No. Hey, but I'm going to the hospital. You mean now? Yes, Brad needs me. Why, it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Madam! May I help you? No, I don't think so. I'm going to see Judge Stevens. He's in room 407. I know where it is. Thank you. I'm sorry, madam, but visiting hours are from 6 to 8.30. It's after 10 now. I know, but it's very important that I see him. I'm terribly sorry. Visiting hours are over. But I'm Mrs. Stevens. I'm his wife. Madam, it wouldn't make any difference to me if you were his father. Well, it may not make any difference to you, but it certainly would make a great deal of difference to me. I wouldn't want to be his father. I'm very We have rules and regulations here that must be obeyed. Your husband is not on the critical list, so no visitors after 8.30. Well, uh, there's something that I must explain to him. You see, uh, he broke three toes, and I wasn't very sympathetic. No so visitors after 8.30. Yes, but it's very important. You see, I have a spring tonic in here, and his silk pajamas, and a few little things. No visitors after 8.30. Come on, we're late. He says he likes to sit on grapefruit. <laughs> Tell the truth, it's more than a little cold. It's uh, getting worse all the time. I think I got the flu. Sorry. Double pneumonia. <laughs> Triple pneumonia. Oh, 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 now I got the chills. Move! 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 Well, since when is the receptionist diagnosing the cases? I'm not diagnosing anything, Doctor. You see, I know she is. Well, this hospital could be put in a very serious position if we made a mistake. In the future, please leave me to... That's sick, huh? A hundred and three. 
We'll put her in room 418. Now, call the fourth floor and tell them we're coming right up. Yes, Doctor. Uh, may I help you to your room, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Stevens? Yes, Mrs. Stevens. Just lean on me. We'll have you up there pretty soon. <laughs> oh, yes. Will you just rest here a moment and I'll get your bag for you? <laughs> Nothing, dear, but you should have heard the list of symptoms I gave that doctor. I'm supposed to be isolated down in room 418. Uh, Jody, what's this all about? Well, honey, I had to pretend that I was sick so I could get a room here. For what? Well, at first I just <laughs> had to tell you how sorry I was for the way that I acted, dear. I really didn't know that you were so badly hurt. Oh, it isn't so bad. Oh, honey, don't you worry. I'm going to make it all up to you when you get home. I'm going to wait on you hand and foot and toes. Oh, wow. And besides, if you're sick, you know that I'm the only one that knows how to take care of you. Look, honey, you brought your spring tonic? Oh. And your silk pajamas? Oh. And what you've never gone to sleep without. Joan, you mean? Yes. Your sardine sandwich. <laughs> you didn't love her. Of course I do love It'll her. It'll never happen again to having you before. Somebody's coming. Well, well, that must be the nurse. She's bringing me a sleeping pill. Oh, well, I can't let her find me here. I, I'm supposed to be isolated. I, I better hide, honey. <laughs> Uh, push over, dear. Jenny, this is a single room. It is? Oh, <laughs> Are you comfortable? Huh. And how are you feeling, Mrs. Hodgkiss? I feel fine, and I'm not going to have the operation. Oh, now, now, we've been all through this, and they'll be ready for you in a few minutes. It's my gallbladder, and I'm keeping it. Oh, you wants your gallbladder out. Your son wants your gallbladder out, so does your daughter. Well, I'm not worried about their gallbladders. Why should they worry about mine? No, no, Mrs. Hodgkiss. <laughs> I am not going to have the operation. Don't bother sending anyone up here for me, because I'm not going with them. Now, please, Mrs. Hodgkiss, they'll be here in a few minutes to take you up to surgery. I have to take the sleeping pill next door. I'm not going anywhere with anyone, and neither is my gallbladder. <laughs> Here comes the nurse. <laughs> yes? Oh, how do you do? Excuse me for barging in like this, but... Well, I didn't want that nurse to see me. You see, my husband's in the next room. But you're a patient here too, aren't you? Uh, yes, I I'm in room 418. <laughs> My husband and I got sick together. We do everything together. We're very close. <laughs> My, isn't this a lovely room you have here? I wish I had it. Then I'd be right next to my husband. Oh, isn't that too bad? <laughs> I'll tell you what, my dear. I'll change rooms with you. Change rooms? Oh, I couldn't let you do that. Oh, my dear, it would make me so happy. I insist. Oh, well, uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't make any difference to me, and then you'll be right next to your husband. Oh, well, that certainly is kind of you, Miss... Uh, oh, Hodgkiss. Hodgkiss. Oh, will you let me have my wrapper? Yes. Uh, well, uh, what about the hospital, though? They might not like this. Oh, I don't care if they do. I'll get even with them for that horrible dinner tonight. <laughs> 418, you said? Yes, it's right down the hall. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Wasn't that sweet of her? Oh, wrong case of fire. <laughs> Wait! 
wake up. You'll have to get up now. Uh, uh, what do you want? You know very well what we're here for. Dr. Matthews wants to take out Mrs. Hotchkiss's naughty old gallbladder. <laughs> You're not going to make a fuss, are you? Well, of course not. As far as I'm concerned, you can take out Mrs. Hotchkiss's gallbladder any time. Good. Come on, Tom. Now, why should they tell me about Mrs. Hotchkiss's gallbladder? Why did they tell Mrs. Hotchkiss, the woman that was in you? <laughs> what do you think that I'm... <laughs> Let's slip on our little cart, Mrs. Hodgkiss. Boys, I've got news for you. I'm not Mrs. Hodgkiss. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not Mrs. Hodgkiss. No. In fact, there's nothing wrong with me at all. I'm just visiting my husband. He's not well. Oh, I see. <laughs> now, I tell you what you do. You go down the hall to room 418. There's a woman there named Mrs. Stevens. Take out her gallbladder. She's Mrs. Hotchkiss. Lady, let's not have any trouble. On the wagon, please. But I'm not Mrs. Hodgkins. Yes, 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 we know you're not Mrs. Hodgkins, but we think you've got her gallbladder. That's what we're after. Come on! Come on! I just found her in 418. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what we almost done. Well, we better get this lady back in bed. <laughs> She's up to surgery. I'll take care of her. <laughs> Wake up, dear. Come on, over you go. Had a girl. Mm. Over you go. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, Here you are. How do you feel now? Where am I? Oh, oh, it hurts. Oh, they took out my dog. Oh, oh, and all those stitches. Oh, oh. <laughs> what an operation. No stitches. <laughs> Must have been an inside job. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 